It was 1980, and amidst the wheat-wrapped rolling hills of the Palouse, roaming the same halls that Murrow himself had graced before, was a broadcaster in the making, blonde and charismatic and gifted, clear-eyed and ready to make her mark. We're dealing with a lot of unknowns, I'm sure, but have you got any idea of what the effect of all this ash is going to have on the crops? Or the like every other Murrow student, for Kathy Gertson in the beginning, the camera was something to be feared. We're talking with Dr. Rod Preston, the chairman of the Department of uh, Animal Science. Soon enough, though, she made it her friend, and the two of them would love one another for many years after. I remember in our undergraduate years, you all look around at each other to try to determine who's going to make it in this business and who might not. And, and Kathy was universally seen as someone who's going to make it. She worked at KWSU Radio and KWSU TV, and she was good. When I first met Kathy, it was the second semester I taught here. You could already see a lot of qualities in her at that time that exemplified she was inquisitive, she was sharp, but you could see the talent that she had as a reporter, as a college student. You can see that is very, very evident. Kathy left Pullman in 1980, but Pullman never left her. Like many before her and after, her time on the Palouse left a mark. She carried it with her forever, proudly. She interned at Krem TV in Spokane. It seems the community here in the Silver Valley is less than willing to participate in any further studies. And was hired right out of college at Como Television in Seattle. Residents here in Washington are wondering just what this conservative tide and a new senator will mean for our state. She would be there for almost 30 years. And in here, it's cold, 15 degrees below zero, but the half million ice cream bars and popsicles that line the shelves will probably be gone by tomorrow night. She never announced, I don't even think she really delivered the news. She just told you the news. She had the most natural ability. It didn't take Seattle long to realize that here was something special, because Kathy Gertzen had the rarest of all qualities in a broadcaster. She was real. The body of Mayer Kahana is on its way home to Israel tonight. Kathy was one of the most gifted broadcasters I've ever met. She had this natural way of doing the news and telling you the story, and she had this way of humanizing stories. It is very difficult to describe the deplorable conditions and the poverty in which these people live. What she'd learned in the hallways of Murrow had only helped reveal what was already there. A real person, a razor sharp wit, and an ability to cut through the TV screen and strike a chord. She touched people. Good luck out there. This is hot off the presses. Another one, American League West Championships. It's still kind of warm, Dan. She was television magic. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Children's Hospital. I'm here with my special little friend, Chelsea, and we are sharing one of her favorite stories before she goes off to bed. You're not going to bed yet? Pretty soon, maybe. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> no, you're a night owl, aren't you? She wants to It's not night yet. It's afternoon. <laughs> You know what? What? We're pretending. Oh. <laughs> I should have told you that to start with, huh? <laughs> Sorry. In time, inspired by Kathy Gertzen, a new generation of would-be broadcasters followed her path to Washington State to chase their own dreams. Certainly they could do it too, they thought. Kathy, after all, made it look so easy. And what an amazing role model for a kid thinking that Kathy once sat in these same seats, had this classroom, and here I am getting the exact same opportunity offered to me. Good afternoon and welcome to First News at Four. We're going to be here every day, live from the Como Four Newsroom. To bring Coming back, I remember from school, you come back for Christmas break, summer break, whatever, and you turn on the news and there she is, and you think, Wazoo connects me to that. Well, this is a very special day here at Como TV. My dear friend Kathy Gertson has been here 25 years. I can't believe that. The years went by, the credentials piled up, Emmys and a National Edward R. Murrow Award. She went to Berlin and covered the wall coming down. Earlier this evening, people started gathering at the Brandenburg Gate, which as you know, is really the heart of Berlin. What happened later in her life would come to almost overshadow something that is very important to understand. Kathy Gertson was a superb journalist and communicator for many of us, the best we've ever seen. 
In 2003, she came home to Pullman to deliver the commencement address to a new batch of cougars being shot from a slingshot out into the world. It was vintage Gertzen, simple truths from an old friend. Risks are courageous. As you go out into the world and pursue your careers or the next step in your life, don't worry when you stumble. Just remember, sometimes, success is really nothing more than a succession of failures. She couldn't have known then that her own personal battles would one day so captivate all who watched her that her courage would become a symbol, a beacon of strength for others facing the unthinkable. In 1998, when she was diagnosed as having an aggressive brain tumor, she made it clear from the first. Hers was a public life. Her battle, too, would be public. Next week on Tuesday, I will have surgery to remove this tumor, which is pushing up against my brain and my brain stem. The fight was to be a desperate, unflinching brawl, an epic war of attrition, testament to one woman's love affair with living. Nine times brain surgeries cut the tumors away, 10 times they crawled back. Of all the things that could go wrong in my body, and my, why, my face, which is, you know, I mean, what I've made my living on, and partly, I mean, my face has been who I am. And this has caused me to really say, is your face who you are? Not really. Even after she had to remove herself from her beloved anchor desk, she kept working. It's hard to not be doing my job every day and not to be telling the news, but you know, my mouth isn't working right. I, it, it wouldn't be fair for the viewer to try to understand the news every day. It, it's, it's something I miss greatly, though. I, I really miss being in my anchor chair. She kept coming back, even after the nerves in her face no longer worked, when she couldn't swallow, when her voice was ravaged, when she lost hearing in one ear, when she could no longer eat solid food. She kept coming back. That's not to say that I don't want to stay under the covers some days. And I have, I've done that. I've, st I've, I've pulled the covers up and go, I, I don't want to do this. But it's really boring under there. And, and I, I can't stay there because there's too much to do. There's too much of life to live. The tumors pushed against her and she pushed back and the rest of us could only watch in wonder and awe. You can't let an illness define you, and I, will, I refuse to let this brain tumor define who I am. I'm, I'm still me, I'm not an illness, I'm not sick. I love my business, and I love, I love the news, and I love journalism, you know that. And I, whenever I see a breaking news story, I always go into my journalism mode. I mean, I always will be. I mean, it's in my blood. And um, if I didn't have this or something to look forward to, you kind of lose a little bit of purpose in your life and you just keep going. She took her last breath on August 13th, 2012. There's never gonna be another Kathy Gertzen. There will be many, many more great news women and men who come through Como, but Kathy was one of a kind. Uh, she'll never be replaced. She'll always be remembered. She was a rare and brilliant gem, created in Seattle, but chiseled and honed and polished in Pullman, put on permanent display at 100 4th Avenue North in a brilliant setting of blues and browns, seen in thousands of homes on thousands of nights, shining still in hearts everywhere. She was devoted to WSU, and anything she could do as an anchor or whatever else in Seattle, she would do anything she could to help WSU. It wasn't just an anchor, it was more like a friend, that's Kathy. She loved the news, she loved journalism, she loved being here, and Kathy loved Washington State University. You know, I'm I'm tough. I'm a cougar. <laughs>